When dealing with planning for an item, the understanding the planning rules and managing an item and the information available is obviously quite important. So if I've found an item here that I want to manage, um, I'm trying to get an overview of what's coming from a requirements perspective and what's in process, then I've got the gross requirements screen and the net requirements screen. So this is a quick walkthrough of uh, having a look at what information is available here for the specific item. So if I go into gross requirements, typically gross requirements is going to show me my uh, independent and dependent demand from a future perspective. So an overview of the upcoming demand. So in this particular case I don't uh, actually have anything here. So let's go and have a look at um, where the demand comes from. So I can go into a forecast. I'm going to go and put in a forecast here. And I'm going to go and specify it for this model because we can have many different forecast models. And I'm going to put in a quantity of 100 here. So this is the date. I'm going to put it to next week, for example, um, for the, the sake of the exercise. So this is our forecast quantity of 100. Now this will get picked up when the forecast plan is run. So if we go into master planning in Dynamics AX then we can have forecast plans and then we have the master plans. So the forecast plans, um, unless you're doing forecasting um, and you want to see that gross requirement, this is where you typically have your forecast plan. So this is the model that's going to run on this particular forecast plan. So the current forecast or current F here. So we can go and run the forecast scheduling and I can run it for the forecast. So if we go and execute it, Um, it's going to give me some error message about a product that I'm not interested in at the moment. So let's go back to our release item and have a look at our gross requirements. So now on the forecast plan we can have a look at our uh, information. So now we have a forecast which is in the future, which is next week, and the system's telling me that I probably should uh, have a production order f to meet that specific future demand. Now you'll see if I change here to my static plan, for example, what you'll see is that this actually switches to net requirements. So um, the gross requirements will only display when you're specifically displaying the uh, forecast plans. So that's the same effect of actually clicking on the net requirements button. So of course we can have a static plan and dynamic plan. I'll pick my static plan. The static plan will give us an overview of where uh, we have uh, our net requirements in terms of total, total demand, total receipts and what our uh, net requirements there. Now you'll see in this particular case at this stage I don't have any forecast here um, and that's because we haven't actually executed the plan. So let's go and execute the plan uh, to include the forecast. So if I go into my master plan setup you'll see I've got my static plan in this particular case and this also has parameters for the forecast so I can include the imagery forecast here in which case it'll run and include my demand forecast into the master plan. So if we execute master scheduling I'm just going to run it for my specific item here the 950 and I'm going to run it as a static plan. And again I've got some um, scheduling issues, but at this stage I'm not too worried about scheduling. So if I look at my net requirements and we switch across to our static plan, you'll see that we now have a demand forecast included in the net requirement. So this gives us the total picture of the demand and the planned production to meet that and the production in process. So our net requirements is going to give us that overview of um, the details that we can execute on and what we can move around. So I've got the ability to see um, for example, in a period fashion, when 
my domain is coming. Um, and this gives me, you'll see a backlog here. I've got a particular sales order and a production order. So I've receipted in terms of I've produced the quantity, um, but I haven't actually finished shipping the product. So you can see here the uh, on hand in this particular case. Um, as well, I can see that's the sales order. Um, and if I look here, I can see there's a future date associated with that. So if I look at the future date, this sales order is telling me it's delayed for 71 days because we haven't actually shipped those goods. They're being produced, but they're just sitting there. So this gives me my messages about what I can do um, with that particular item. So I don't have to go and investigate why has it been sitting there, for example. In this particular case, we have a sales order and its associated production order. So again I can see that from a period perspective that we expect to receipt one and then we expect to issue one uh, in this particular case. In the future we'll have our demand forecast if we were to plant and, and actually produce to the demand. So this would be the hundred in the future. Now if I look here, the system's giving me some X's and the X's are in the action date. Um, and if I look on the actions, what it's telling me is that I should, even though it's suggesting a planned production order, I shouldn't execute it. What it's telling me is that this production order that I've already got in process, to avoid switching around setup times and stuff like that, you should probably go and increase this particular production order and add a hundred to it and just do a longer production run and therefore you'll produce a hundred and one which would be maybe more efficient than doing two different productions on two different days for example. Um, so that's what the net requirements can show you is, is an overview of really the demand and the supply um, characteristics to give you that net requirements of what's happening with the item.